Hello, fellow web entwickler. We're going to continue quickly buzzing over all of the CSS selectors to discuss how and why they're used. We're going to title this video Standard Selectors of CSS because these selectors are not part of any pseudo selector group and they serve as the basis for all other selectors that we're going to cover. So we'll just call these the standard selectors. Okay, the first standard selector is the universal selector. And what that does is selects everything, all elements. So let's see what that does. And if you wanted to start at the body element, you could say body and all descendants. In this example, we're using the universal selector to target all child elements of P elements. So we have a B child element here and a U child element here inside of paragraph elements. So let's see what that renders. So you can see only the child elements of the paragraph are affected and targeted. And it doesn't matter what type of element it is. If, if it's a child of the paragraph, it's going to be targeted. So you use the universal selector when you want to just target all elements regardless of their type. All right, next we have the type selector. And this just targets element by their element type. So you put the element type that you want here and then any style properties that you want for those elements. Let's see what that renders. Okie dokie. Very simple. So if you want to target audio elements or input elements for form building, whatever, you just put the element name right there and it'll target all of them that's on the page. Okay, in this example, you can learn to use the compound selector. Now what you do to use the compound selector is you just put the name or ID or class of the element that you want here. And then separated by commas, you could put as many elements as you like by type or by their class or ID. And just make sure you comma separate them and it makes a compound selector. So all of the input elements on the page, all of the text area elements, and all of the select elements will be affected by these properties. So let's see what that gives us. A nice looking form. Now if I remove these properties, you can see what the form will render like. Totally different. So using CSS, you can really structure your form to look exactly the way you want without having to put paragraphs to separate the inputs. All you have to do is set your inputs to block. See display block. Then you don't have to put paragraphs or break tags to separate all of them down the page. All right, so that's using the compound selector. It's just comma separating as many element types that you want. All right, next we have the class selector. And I'm sure all of you have used this before. And you can think of it as a way to group elements that are to be styled in a similar way. So you just put a dot and the class name, and then you assign that class to any elements on the page using the class attribute. So let's see what that renders. And we have a paragraph with the class one and a div with the class one. So the div and the paragraph that have class one get targeted and styled. Now here's a little handy tip that many people don't realize is you can specify what type of element to target with that class. For instance, if I put P, before the period, that means only elements of the P type will be affected. See what it renders? You can see the div is not affected. Now if I make this div, now the P with class one will not be affected. So you can use the element type before the class name if you want to specify exactly which kind of element type is going to be affected by that class. And finally, we have the ID selector, which most of you are familiar with also. Now, the ID selector is used to target an element on the page that has a unique ID attribute set to it. And only one element on the page can have this unique ID. So when you use the ID selector, what you're doing is you're targeting that one unique element on the page. Let's see what this renders. I just made it look like an ad. So if you had an ad on the page and you wanted to to target its container for styling, maybe center it or whatever you want to do, then you can use something like the ID attribute. And then target the ID using CSS ID selector. And that's just the pound symbol before the name or the identifier. 
So you put the pound symbol, then the identifier. Now with the ID selector, you can do the same thing that we do with the class selector and specify element type to affect with that ID. So if I was to put a P here, we're not going to get any styling for our div. See? But if I put div here, we do get styling for the div. And that's just a way to exactly specify which element type with that ID will be affected. And I know only one element on the page can have a unique ID, so you might as well just use it like that. But there's a lot of times that I will specify that it is a div with an ID of add one. And I like to do that just to let myself visually know in my CSS what I'm targeting. It's a div with an ID of add one. All right. Now that you have a grasp on the standard selectors of CSS and the combinator selectors of CSS, you can combine them and mix and match them. Now the only selectors left are all of the pseudo selectors. So that's what we'll be covering in the next set of videos, all of the pseudo selectors. So stay tuned and you'll become a master at using all of the CSS selectors.